Hey there, Travis Baldry here. Just got back from APAC 2019, which was pretty wonderful. Uh, but while I was there, a post came by on one of my uh, YouTube videos on audiobook production. And uh, almost simultaneously, I saw a Facebook post that kind of was asking some similar questions. So I thought I would do a really quick instructional video on how to do really nice, clean pickup insertions into your audiobook audio. Um, one of the keys to this is honestly having a spectral view in your DAW. Apart from that, it should work pretty much everywhere as a technique. So let's get to it. All right, here we are in Adobe Audition, and you can see that I have my spectral view up. Like I said, this should work in just about any DAW. We're just inserting audio into existing audio, but uh, it really does help if you have a spectral view because it lets you identify the sounds that are being made and really select an excellent point to sub-select from. So I have two clips up here. One is the original raw audio, and one is the mastered audio. And the reason that I have both clips up is because there are effectively two ways that I do pickups. One is for a publisher, where I'm going to be providing raw audio to them, and they're going to be handling all the actual final insertion and mastering themselves. And the other is where I'm editing and mastering the book myself, and I'm going to be doing it with mastered audio. So I'm going to show you both paths, although they're largely the same. At any rate... Let's listen to this back, and I'm going to use the mastered version, because that'll be easier for you to hear. This time, with his stance readied, he raised his shield against Lyndon's next attack. Now that's supposed to be steadied, not readied, so that's the change that we're going to make. And uh, the first step of this is just to get the energy of the recording right. This time, with his stance readied. This time, with his stance readied. This time, with his stance steadied trying to get that pitch and that lilt and that cadence just about the same. So, one of the reasons I do this like this is because your voice is never exactly the same from day to day, but I'm kind of anal retentive about my pickups. I really want them to be absolutely seamless. So this is what I try and do to ensure that. I'm going to go ahead and record my pickup now. This time, with his stance steadied. And that's it. All right, so here's my raw audio. This time, with his stance steadied. Now, what I want to do is replace as little of the original performance as humanly possible. That is the, the surest way to make it transparent. You know, the less changes, the less is noticeable. So, what we're going to do is look at these sounds. Now, you see this, this really hot area up high in the frequency range? That's the S of stance. And then you have this percussive T sound that comes right after. And then here's the S of steadied. Now what I want to do is just pick the best point where I can select as little of the audio that I've recorded as possible and replace it in the original. With his stance, I'm not even going to, with his stance, I've got this kind of nice fast section here. I'm just going to select right in between the S and the T and all the way to the end of the D and I'm going to copy it. Now I'm going to go to my raw audio. This is what I would send to a publisher. With his stance. And here's that S again from stance all the way to readied in this case. And we're just going to replace it. This time, with his stance steadied, he raised his shield against Lyndon's next attack. Pretty darn seamless, right? I don't think if you're listening to that, you would notice the difference. Now, Let's do it on the fully mastered version. So I'm going to fully master my pickup using the same stack that I used to master the original audio when I sent it off for proof. This time, with his stance steadied, and again, right after that S, before that T, to the end of steadied, we'll go to our master. Um, with his stance right in between, right to the end. Now, you look at this, and to me, it feels like the energy went a little bit up on the new recording, that I was maybe a little closer to the mic, or I was just projecting a little bit more. So I'm going to paste this, and I'm going to nudge it down just a hair. Just to and it's already pre-selected, so that's not a big deal to do. This time, with his stance steadied, he raised his shield against Lyndon's next attack. And... I've replaced very little of the original audio. I don't think any casual listener would be able to tell. 
but it still sounds perfectly natural. The less you change out, the better off you are. Now, you have to be careful again where you choose to make these replacements. You, with a little bit of practice, you'll figure out what the best areas are to do it. And uh, just because you've recorded the audio and you're inserting a subsection doesn't mean it's a good insertion. You can still have your performance be off. You can still not be matching the cadence or the pitch well. And in those cases, you need to record again. Um, Sometimes it's helpful to record your pickup multiple times in a row, repeating that same cadence to just kind of get into the flow. And then you just take the section from the best and most closely matching take and replace that. Now, obviously, sometimes you're going to be replacing way more audio than this, but for me, a lot of my pickups are a single omitted word or often a word that I added for some reason, or like in this case where I just sort of transpose the word with something else. And uh, this takes care of a large number of my pickups. Um, Now, if I were editing and mastering my own audio, I would be done here. If I were just doing a pickup for my publisher, I would take this phrase that I have repaired and I would add it to my pickup reel based on what audio they had requested to have sent back to them and mail it off. And then when they master it, it's going to be a nice clean match. And that's that. Um, That's really all there is to it. Um, Like I say, you, you kind of, it takes a little bit of practice to figure out the right spots to, to, to dial in your selection so that you're getting the best parts of the phrase to use. But With the spectral view, it makes it much easier to find those sections. I generally find that after S's is a really good time to to begin your selection. Um, Now, you can go even trickier than this. Um, You don't even have to go to the end of a word. You can can stay in the middle of the word, and uh, this might be a good example of that. So let's, uh, let's look here. This time, with his stance steadied. Now, deed, steadied, and readied, both end with the same audio, right? So I could, conceivably, select from here right to where D happens. This is steadied, and here's where that D hits, right there. So I'm just going to select right in the middle of it, okay? Let's go to our... Here's where we repaired. I'm just going to go ahead and undo. And let's alter our selection. Now you can see that's where D hits there. Red deed. And then there's that second D. Let's just paste right in here. And we'll nudge it down again. A oh, touch. This time, with his stance steadied, he raised his shield against Lyndon's next attack. We've replaced even less of the audio now. And again, just to illustrate, you can you can really kind of you can really tighten it up if you get if you get a good sense of where these percussive sounds are that make it easy to to have a nice, clean selection point. It's a lot harder to select in the middle of some vowel. You don't want to be messing with that. You're looking for these kind of, these percussive points or these drops right before a percussive sound. Anyway, I hope this has been useful. Take care. <laughs>